Okay, now here's something we're going to do a little bit different. Some of the other parts that we did, we had different tool groups inside of one machine group. But in this case, this machine group is going to do all of the cuts that we just did. But we can actually pick a completely different machine to do the other side of the part. In that case, I'd right click in the Operations Manager, go to my Groups, and tell it I want a new machine group, and I'm going to pick Lathe. And I can name this new machine group. And I'm going to call it Setup 2 Live Tooling, because we're going to be using Live Tooling to cut the hex and the slots. Go to our next tab. There's our Tool Settings. Again, you can give it any four-digit program number you want. Calculate from material. Basically, these are as before. And we're going to set up stock. So this is just like we're setting up a new job for a completely different machine. I could actually, under Files here, have gone to Machine and picked Replace and selected a completely different machine if I wanted to. So under Stock, we're going to describe our stock boundary. We'll go to Properties. Well, the diameter now is just going to be 3 inches because we took all that excess stock off. And the length this time we know is 2 and a quarter. And we're not going to have any stock on the front that needs to be cut off. But there is an ID hole this time. We've got a hole that goes all the way through the middle that's an inch and a half. So let's take a look at our preview. There's not much to look at with the toolpaths. I can turn off that toolpath display and there we can see the boundary of our stock. And we'll hit enter to continue. So that looks good. We're going to OK that. Now, for now, we're not going to do anything with our chuck jaws. We're actually going to come back to that in a second because what I need to do is to flip the part over first. So let's just OK this. Now I'm going to use Mastercam to flip my part over, but I don't actually want it to output any flip commands into the program. I don't want it to tell the operator to flip the part. So what we're going to do is go to Toolpaths, Miscellaneous Operations, and we're going to tell it that we want to do a stock flip. Now it's coming up with a name for the uh, NC program. I can give this a different name if I want to. And in here, we're going to tell it what it is that we want to flip. So our geometry, I'm going to say select. And I'm just going to put a window around all of this and my selection. And just as before, it's going to make a copy of it, move those to a different level, offset by 10. It's going to blank the original geometry. And I want to move the front of the part, which is at Z0, to the back side. And I'm going to say Select, and I'm just going to pick a point on the back. So I'm basically taking the front and moving it to the back. I'm flipping it over right where it sits. And we're not going to worry about any of this chuck position stuff at all because we haven't defined a chuck yet. So let's OK this. Now as it did before with the solid, it flipped the part over and it's on top of itself. So what we're going to do is go to our level manager. I'm going to put myself on level 11 or level 12. It really doesn't matter. And I'm going to turn off level 1 and level 2 because that's the geometry for the first setup. OK that. So now our stock is defined and our part is flipped over. At this point, I'm going to go back into these properties and I'm going to go back to stock setup and now I'm going to define my chuck jaws. So let's go to properties. This time, the type of chuck jaws we want is something that's actually going to grab on the inside of the part. So I'm going to use ID1 as my chuck jaw selection. 
I'll leave this jaw to be about three inches long, the width of step. Let's set that to one inch because that's what's going to be grabbing on the inside. I want to grab from the stock and I want a grip length of one inch. And let's see what that looks like. Turn off my shading and yeah, there's my chuck jaw right in there. And it's butting right up against this backside here. can okay that for now and let's turn on our shaded boundaries and you can see that a little bit better just go back to properties and preview so you can see there's our chuck jaw and there's our stock now I know our stock has actually been cleared out up to here but for the purposes of illustration so that you can see what's going on this is fine okay that and I think I'm gonna turn off that shaded boundary and okay this and I'll reshade my solid so now we need to regenerate that flip which didn't move it anywhere and um, that should be good for now if you haven't done so make sure you're saving this part we probably should have saved it before we did the flip. If you're about to do the flip, make sure you save your part.